Now we're still getting some dark areas here, and those are in fact caused by a, a different issue, which is that we haven't got enough reflection and refraction bounces to eliminate the problem of total internal reflection. Total internal reflection is where light enters the surface and then bounces around and essentially reaches the limit of the number of bounce calculations that the renderer is set up to calculate and thus produces a black pixel. We can adjust the number of bounces that are calculated using the PBR tab of our mantra node. We can see here we've got a reflect limit of 10 and if I increase this up to say 30 we can see that the black areas disappear completely. Now for the purposes of testing I'm going to revert this back to the default of 10 uh, and leave the black areas there though in a final render we might want to up the reflection limit in order to get rid of them. Things that will control the kind of caustics that we get are the position of the light, the shape and thickness of the object which is casting the caustics, and also the index of refraction. The index of refraction is set on our glass shader and we can see here under the ray trace tab we have the outside index of refraction and the inside index of refraction. The normals of the glass, as we saw earlier, are set to point outwards. So the index of refraction outside is that of air, which is 1. And by default, the index of refraction for the glass shader is set to glass, which is around 1.5. And that will suit us fine for our initial renders. Let's look now at how to create photon-based caustic effects. And this is a two-stage process. First thing we must do is generate a caustic photon map. And we need to lay down another mantra node in order to do this. And I'm going to call this mantra generate photons. And the settings we need to put here are on our render tab. We need to change the rendering type to photon map generation. And then here on our PBR tab we need to decide where we're going to put our caustic photon map. So I'm going to put it in the hip directory and I'm going to call it caustic glass. I don't want to generate a global photon map, so I'm just going to delete the setting there. And I'm going to leave the photon storage count at 100,000 to start with. The other thing it's important to do when generating a photon map is to make sure that you have your objects and your lights set up correctly. It will increase the time taken to create your photon map and potentially make it less useful if you include objects in the generation of the map which aren't actually going to either create photons or be the receivers of photons. Now in our case, in fact, we only have two objects in the scene, both of which are relevant to our photon map. But nevertheless, in order to be to confirm good practice, I'm going to select them like so and explicitly list the objects we want to include in the photon map generation. Now we have two lights in our scene. We have the spotlight and we have an environment light. We don't actually want the environment light to generate any photons. So I'm going to use this solo light parameter to select just our spotlight. And that means that the photon map will be generated taking into account only the spotlight and not the environment light. And you'll notice already that Houdini is different from some other applications in a couple of ways here, one of which is that rather than having a setting on each object uh, which some other applications have which allow you to choose whether it's going to interact with caustic photons or not or generate caustic photons or not, 
uh, you achieve that simply by including the relevant objects here in the render which creates the photon map. In some other applications too, you get to choose which objects emit, which lights rather, emit photons, and to choose the intensity of those photons and the number of photons emitted from each light. Now in Houdini, the photons are emitted from all the lights that are included in the render, and that's why it's important to make sure that you only include those lights for which you want caustics generated. The number of photons is given by the figure that we had in the PBR tab, here in this case 100,000. And the intensity of the photons is derived from the color and intensity of the light. So there are no separate settings for the color and intensity of the photons emitted. And the photons emitted are distributed amongst the various lights illuminating the scene. Anyway, let's click Render in order to generate this photon map. And we can follow its progress if we have a Render Scheduler tab. And I've put one up here already. And we can see that this lists all the renders that are currently taking place. So we have that render, it's stopped, so that means that it's complete. So we can visualize our photo map very quickly by laying down a geometry node. I'm going to call this Viz Photons. And then if I dive inside, using the file node I can pick the photon map that we just generated. And if I enable the display of points, we get a sense of what that photo map looks like. And that's useful for telling whether or not our photo map is nicely centered on the glass which is casting the photons. And in this case, it is. So we can go up and switch off the display of this and switch off the display of points so that that doesn't interfere with our render. So to render the photo map that we've just generated, we're going to need to make some changes to our mantra node. And we make these in the PBR tab. Um, the first thing we need to do is set the caustic cache file to photon map. And then we need to set the caustic photon file parameter to the photo map that we just generated, which is this one. And then we can go into our render view and select mantra1 to start generating the image. And there it's starting. And in fact, now that we can see where the caustics are, uh, we can pause that render and using the shift key, shift and drag a rectangle around the area that we're interested in. And that will ensure that only that area is updated from now on. And that should make it more efficient to tweak our caustic effects. So you can see that that is now the only part of the image that's being updated. So if we zoom in here, we can see that there's a bit of spottiness around our caustics here and here. And we can try and correct that using these two parameters. And to some extent it's a process of trial and error to get these right. The two parameters represent, first of all, here the caustic search radius a distance in real-world units that Houdini uses to look for photons. So at the moment, if I'm shading a point here, it will search in a maximum radius of one real-world unit round the point we're shading for photons that might contribute some caustic illumination. The caustic count is the number of photons that it takes into account. So in this case, it will be the 50 nearest photons. And most of the time, those will be in a much smaller radius than, than one unit. So the first thing to look at is increasing your caustic count. Uh, the caustic radius is really a limit which prevents Houdini looking for these photons beyond a certain radius. If you had a huge uh, radius here, then potentially when shading a point here, 
if there were not many caustic photons nearby, Houdini might start taking into account photons that are a long way away, and this radius sets a limit on that. So it sets a limit, ultimately, on the degree of blurriness of your caustic photon map. So you probably want quite a low figure here, depending on the size of your scene. I'm going to leave that at 1 for the moment. Let's try increasing our photon count to look at the 100 nearest photons. We can see that improves things a little bit. We're still getting a certain amount of blotchiness here, but it's a bit better. Let's try upping it to 200. And the blotchiness has largely disappeared. Ultimately, if we want to get a very finely sharp result here, we're going to increase, have to increase the number of photons that we're generating. So we would need, for example, to go into our generation of photons and increase that number to, say, 250,000. And I'm going to render that photon map again and pause the video. So that's rendered out. Let's go into our Mantra rendering node, and let's increase this to, say, 250, and see what the effect is on the render. Still has a little bit of blotchiness, but the quality is better. Let me try reducing our search radius and see whether that sharpens things up. And we can see that is a little bit better. So it's a process of trial and error using these parameters here to get nice sharp results for our photon map.